Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. You guys have been asking for so long, how do you make your foam grips? How do you do it? How do you resin them? I'm going to show you. This is just a couple that I've made recently, um, but I'm going to give you a five-in-one bonus today uh, because I love you all so much. I'm going to show you how uh, I seal them. I'm going to show you how to um, paint four different kinds and uh, and everything you need to know will be linked in the description so where I get these I order them online you have to look under phone uh, blank phone grips blank phone accessories bulk phone accessories um, but where I got mine I will leave in the description I've taped the sides and bottoms of them all before I start uh, doing anything so that you protect everything that you don't want to paint so you just take simple tape from from home and go around the outside of it and just fold it in under the bottom and make sure it sits level um, so I have added a little bit of Duraclear I use Duraclear varnish gloss varnish for glue so I sponged it on the surface it's still wet and now I'm going to use glitter. You can use nail glitter. You can use any kind of glitter you want. Uh, the stuff that I'm using is a vintage blue embossing glitter, and it does the trick. It is like one of my favorite. I call this my glitter bomb phone grip. So what I do is a, a glitter bomb background, and then I resin it. It's a two-part thing. Uh, then I paint it once it's finished drying after I've resined it, and then I I resin it again so my glitter bomb ones are always double resined so I've just used glitters put it all over the top patted it down a little bit to make it stick in the glue and then we are gonna put that aside and let it dry for quite a while and tap off any excess glitter uh, before we resin so I'm gonna save that so that this glitter lasts me the rest of my life <laughs> I did get that at Michael's. So if you are looking for glitter, I definitely suggest Joann's, Michael's, Hobby Lobby, um, anywhere you can buy craft supplies. So here with the second one, while we let the glitter bomb one dry, I'm going to do um, sort of like a galaxy, I guess. Now I'm going to put matte black paint, acrylic paint, on the surface as kind of like a base coat. The reason I'm doing this is because it is a lot easier for me to paint on a surface that is not slippery and shiny like the phone grips come naturally. So I, I find it a lot easier for me to just put a thin coat uh, with a sponge of the matte black paint over top, let it dry, and then go from there. Now I'm going to be doing uh, like a dark kind of like northern lights in the sky I guess you can say um, so I'm going to use a little bit of light green a little bit of uh, like a cobalt blue and a little bit of aqua and some magenta I will leave all the paint colors that I have used on each phone grip um, separated in the description for you so that you can use the same colors as me or you can avoid using the same colors as me it's completely up to you <laughs> Um, I'm just going to show you what I like to do for some of them, some of the ideas. Um, if you want to see more, I do post them all on my Facebook page at Rachel's Rocks. Um, and I always look little, little videos too, because you just cannot get what you want from a photo sometimes. So sometimes I have to show everybody a video <laughs> so that they can see just how gorgeous these things are. I have had one on the back of my phone. Uh, for about three months now and I could not live without it they are awesome kickstands for when I want to watch videos on my phone um, I hang on to it to feel safer <laughs> that I'm not gonna drop my phone anywhere uh, it's easier to take pictures when you have that phone grip on the back it's it's something my husband does not have one on his phone but every time he touches my phone he instantly turns it around pulls out the accordion uh, phone grip, and he is ready to go. He cannot touch my phone without playing with the phone grip. So it's uh, definitely something that I don't think I could live without now that I'm so used to having one. Very, very handy. So all of these random colors I put in, 
Um, I'm now going to put nail glitter. It's uh, nail chrome powder or nail shell powder. Um, I also purchased this on Amazon. Uh, it lasts forever. It came with like five or six different colors. So I'm using a little bit of green on the green, a little bit of pink on the magenta areas, and blue on the blue. And it just kind of gives it like a really cool effect once it's done. Now because my paint is still a little bit damp, I'm just pressing the glitter into it with my finger gently. Um, just so that that glitter kind of stays put. It doesn't like blow off anywhere. I've just kind of pressed it down into the paint. Um, if you don't want it to go anywhere, you can also use DuraClear varnish um, and uh, or gloss varnish. The same thing I'm using throughout this video as glue. So um, you can just put a little bit over top of each color and let it dry so that that glitter doesn't go anywhere if your paint is totally dry when you decide to put your glitter on. Um, so I have literally just put a little bit of glitter on top of the areas that we painted and once it's resined this thing is going to look amazing. Now I'm going to put little gold stars on it. This is literally Elmer's glitter, chunky glitter. There's like five or six different shapes in there and I love gold stars. So I'm going to put some gold stars on our Galaxy phone grip right now and using the DuraClear varnish gloss as a glue like I do because uh, it's, it's at my desk. It's handy. So it's being used as a glue. I'm using a toothpick to dab on a little dot of glue and then a wax pencil which I also purchase on Amazon um, and I'm putting this little stars right on top of the little dots of glue and I'm gonna let that dry so that when we resin it the stars stay put and they don't float off to one side or all crowd up into the middle um, they don't go anywhere because resin will make stuff move around when it's drying um, so you want to make sure anything that you have in there, whether it's flat back crystals or or little beads or, or whatever you're using, jewels of any kind, you want to make sure you glue them down because or else they're not going to stay where you want them to. So we're going to let that dry with the glitter bomb one. And this one, uh, by the time it's done, it kind of resembles almost like a, a geode sort of. I'm not I'm not trying to make it that way. I'm just trying to be random and make some kind of colorful piece of art. Um, but in the end it does somewhat resemble a geode. So we'll see how it goes and, and see what you think of it. Um, now I'm using an eggplant purple, cerulean blue. I'm going to use magenta again as well. That's one of my favorite colors. And I'm also using jungle green from the Martha Stewart collection. Um, she has some great paints. Shout out to Martha Stewart. Um, I really am enjoying her 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 paints. They're they're amazing. The colors are great. The consistency is great, um, and I don't need a lot to get like a full coat of it. So it's it's really nice paint. I definitely recommend it. So shout out to Martha. I am adding a little bit of magenta now. And then we're going to be using the glitter the same way we did with the Galaxy one. Uh, when that paint's almost dry, I'm going to pat in some glitter, uh, pink on pink, purple on purple, blue on blue, and there's there's a, a teal glitter that I have as well that I'm going to put on the uh, jungle green area. So you can see I'm using the Martha Stewart sponges. Um, and I'm also using CraftSmart wooden handled sponges, sponge daubers. So uh, any sponges will work. Makeup sponges will work. Um, you can cut sponges from the dollar store and make them work. I, that's what I've done as well. So um, don't be picky about what kind of sponges you're using because uh, any sponge will do. Just always make sure you don't have too much paint on your sponge or it's just going to be a big blob of paint. It does not blend. <laughs> so the glitter's on there. It has a cool effect once again. Um, looks very cool. And I'm using rose gold from Folk Art. Uh, it's acrylic paint, but it has such a nice shine. Like there's, there's a different sheen to it compared to the gold that I normally use. 
and uh, it looks really nice. Once I've resined it, it just, it looks like a, it almost looks copper to be honest. And maybe that's why <laughs> I use it. I don't know. But as you can see, I'm just putting in little areas, kind of separating the colors, but but just putting gold, rose gold in, in, in little spots. And it's okay if it's thicker in some areas. And I just round it off. I make sure there's no sharp corners. So there's like one sharp corner here. And I'm going to round that off over by the magenta colored area. And you'll see, because I don't really want any sharp corners. Just round it off. There. Let that dry. With this one, it's just going to be a simple uh, dotted mandala or mandala, however you like to say it. Um, I'm starting off with some gold leaf in the center. Gold leaf is a very potent paint. Um, it's I highly recommend you use a good mask when you're painting with stuff. Do not breathe in the fumes. Um, it's very expensive and a very uh, beautiful but it is also a type of paint that is quite, um, what is the word? I would say it has a mind of its own. <laughs> it doesn't always go where you want it to. And uh, so, yes, gold leaf has a whole different way uh, about it. And uh, it's unpredictable. I guess that's the best word for it. Um, but it does have such a beautiful finish. So I do like to use gold leaf, but... Once again, it's expensive and you need to have it in a well-ventilated area and wear a mask while you're playing with it or else you might be sorry. Um, so I am using a little bit of the gold leaf in this. Um, I just kind of added, throughout, I will be adding like a, a little dot here and there of the gold just to kind of keep the, the gold theme going. But uh, we're going to change the colors up a little bit. I'm literally... Uh, putting a bigger dot and then walking the dots around it um, and changing the colors as we go. Um, you can take your time and and do exactly what I'm doing. This might not even be centered. By the time we're done, it might look funny um, because I literally just threw a dot in the center. So I don't know if uh, this is going to look a little wonky by the time we're done. But um, you don't have to do this uh, color theme with yours. You don't have to do the dots the way I'm doing it. This is just another idea for you to um, get inspired by. That's all you got to do. Now, don't forget layering. When you layer dots on top of dots in different colors, it really changes it up. Um, I'm not going to do too much of that on this one. I'm just going to kind of leave it simple for everybody. Um, this one does resemble the one that I have on my phone and I've added, uh, some flat back crystals to it so that there's even more bling. Uh, and of course it's resin. So it looks like there's a glass coat over top of it. So it's, it's pretty fancy and it does get noticed. So, uh, keep in mind your phone grip may be noticed once you make one. Um, also, I just want to let you guys know, please do not disrespect the pop socket company and call your phone grips pop sockets because they are not. They are handmade, hand painted phone grips. So please, just out of respect, don't hashtag pop sockets if you post pictures of yours um, because they're not pop sockets. They, they've worked very hard to get where they are and they have beautiful pop sockets, beautiful, beautiful phone grips. Um, so let's not take anything away from them. Let their light shine and and just stick to calling these phone grips, custom phone grips, um, hand-painted phone grips, okay? Just promise me that, guys. Um, also, everything, like I said, everything you need to, will be in the description of this video. Uh, please like and share and comment. Uh, let me know what you think. Let me know if you have more ideas for what you can put on a phone grip. Um, I'd love to see pictures of yours if you want to send them over to me on Facebook, Rachel's Rocks on Facebook. I would love to see what you do with yours once you've seen my my video. So you guys are like my, my family and I'm so proud of you and I'm proud of what um, 
what you learn from me and you're like my little babies. So don't forget to share with me and comment and tell me how you're doing. And I would love to see your stuff. So I appreciate those of you who have sent me pictures. I, I cherish them and I keep them in a big folder on my phone that I have to upload to Dropbox before my phone crashes, but um, I keep them all and I appreciate every single one of you uh, watching my tutorials and painting with me and supporting me. And uh, I don't, I don't get to say I love you enough as much as I'd love to. So just know I love you guys and thank you so much for your support. I don't want you to think that I forget about you if I haven't been posting a tutorial in a little while. Just life keeps getting in the way, guys. But there will be more coming. There will be more coming. Halloween's coming. I'm going to get some spooky ones. We're going to do some spooky ones. So I'm adding a little bit of gold again. You can see it just kind of little glints of gold throughout. I did add a lighter green dot on top of the bigger green dots. It just changes it. It really does change it quite a lot when you layer colored dots on top of other dots. It changes the whole look of things. So we are going to use Art Resin. Hey, Art Resin. Love you. You are like uh, my top six things in life that I love the most, starting with my kids, my husband, my fur babies, my rock family, my rocks, and Art Resin. Art Resin, I love you but you still don't give me a discount. I would love a discount. <laughs> Shout out to Art Resin, guys. So, equal parts always, equal parts. Now, I am going to be doing a few rocks um, at the same time, so I'm using a little bit more resin than what you would actually need for four phone grips. You don't need a lot. I think I didn't even use like 10 milliliters of the stuff on all four phone grips. So, you don't need a lot. So I always wait till I have a batch of rocks that I'm resining and uh, I do my phone grips first and then I move on to my rocks afterwards. So I'm using a squeegee, um, I don't know what they're called, a Tylenol dispenser. It came with the Tylenol for my son when he was a baby. I keep these because these are very handy. Um, so I suck the resin up in and I squeeze a little bit out and then I use a popsicle stick to kind of spread it out, kind of like you're icing the top of a cake. But you don't want the icing to go running down the sides of your cake, okay? So just try and smooth it around and adjust it. Make sure you tilt it in different lights to make sure the whole surface is covered properly because it can play tricks on you when it's really shiny and you might not see a bare spot. So take a look under the light and make sure you've got the whole thing covered. Um, always wait to do your glitter ones last, my best advice, um, because you don't want that glitter transferring uh, over to all your other work that doesn't have glitter on it. So always do your glitter ones last and don't use too much resin. Always start with a little bit. You can always add more, um, but you don't want it going over the sides. So don't let it overflow. Just put enough that it's covering the whole piece of artwork. And like I said, glitter last. Don't do anything with the glitter bomb ones until it's your last one. Because that glitter is going to be moving around. You can actually see it moving around um, when I put it down. It's still all that glitter is moving all over the place. So take a look at that when I place it back down on the mylar. Oh, they look so beautiful. So we are going to let those dry um, for 10 to 12 hours, okay? But first, we need to get the bubbles out. I did have an art resin torch, but unfortunately it broke recently, so I had to get my hubby to go out and get me a culinary torch from the local Canadian tar. So on a low setting, because don't forget we're, we're working with plastic and tape and glitter, low setting on your torch and just blow the bubbles right out of the surface so that those micro bubbles are gone. You might have to go over them a couple times, store them um, in a Tupperware container with a lid. I'm using a little box with Mylar at the bottom um, with a lid and drying it for 10 to 12 hours. And now that they are dry, we get to touch them <laughs> and they are 
gorgeous, guys. They are gorgeous. They Every bit of glitter, every bit of color, the stars shine even more than what they did before. It looks so beautiful. Don't forget, you got to take the tape off the back, right? So I usually just lift up a little piece and then I take a pair of scissors and snip it. And depending on how much tape you use, it should just peel right off and none of your artwork, none of your resin should be coming off. It should all be there, safe and sound and happy. Imagine that on the back of a phone. You'd be staring at it for days. I stare at mine, I'm telling you. I stare at mine a lot. <laughs> it makes me happy. Look at that. It looks so beautiful. You can add crystals to the geode one and make it look even more like a geode. Um, this one is a two-part process. So what I do is I'm going to paint over top of this again. And I'll show you an example of what I do. Um, this is a different one, but it's also a glitter bomb one. So I've resined it, painted over top. Then I resin it again. So that's a two-part process. My glitter bombs always have like an extra coat of resin, extra love, blood, sweat, and tears. So that's what I'm doing with that. I love you guys. I hope you love this tutorial. Keep painting.